How's it going, everyone? So today we're gonna switch it up a little bit. I do the trade recaps a lot. By now, you should know the setups that I like to take. I'm a big fan of trading bull flags, bear flags, and then occasionally upside opening range breaks and downside opening range breaks. The flags are my favorite. In the current market, I'm noticing that those upside opening range breaks and the downside opening range breaks don't set up as clean as often. So I really haven't been trading them that much, but there was a great example of a nice upside opening range break that happened on GME. This was Wednesday, June 8th. And before the days pass and it gets a little too old, I wanna make sure to highlight this because I think that there's a reason why this upside opening range break worked and it's because it caught a lot of momentum the day before. We've been in a very choppy market recently where a lot of stocks and the SPY and the Qs have been stuck in a range. So there hasn't really been an opportunity for a lot of stocks to catch momentum to the upside or really sell off to the downside. It's been very back and forth. And when this really opened up the prior day, I think that's the main reason why the next day, that upside opening range break had a high probability. Just trading patterns alone is gonna be very hit or miss. It's all about the context of the pattern, when it's created and what happened the day before and also the current market environment. It takes a lot of experience to kind of understand where we are in the market as far as sentiment. You know, are we bullish? Are we bearish? Are we in consolidation? Are we trending to the upside? Are we trending to the downside? And when things can possibly change. In the beginning of my trading journey, it was very hard to kind of pick that apart and understand what was going on. But with experience, I got a lot better. And that is a huge factor to consider when trading patterns, because if you just trade the pattern alone without anything else, that's when that win rate can be very all over the place versus factoring it all together. That's how you can increase that win rate and increase probability of success. So now let's really break down the GME chart, starting with the daily. Daily first, and then I break down those levels on a lower time frame. I'm always using prior day high, prior day low, and then I just get pre-market high and low from a five minute chart. It doesn't really matter what chart you're looking at in the pre-market, you're still gonna be able to see pre-market high, pre-market low. I just prefer to use the five. So now really looking at this daily chart, what happened? So on the 25th, this had a huge two day move Obviously hard to sustain a move like that, but then what did it do? It pulled back to the nine EMA, right around kind of that 50% retracement, and then it had a big move higher, went sideways for a couple days. So almost looking like a bull flag, but just realizing that it had a big move higher, pulled back about 50%, and now it's consolidating. And then look at this move on the seventh. Huge move that day, that's a momentum candle. That's a big buying day. Also knowing that it's getting to that prior high. So there's a lot of technical levels above and it has the personality of really being able to get going once it catches momentum. And then when I see a day like this, broke out of the consolidation, recently caught momentum, possible continuation. The next day, I'm thinking that maybe it can continue. I don't wanna short it because shorting strong stocks is tough. I wanna wait for the pattern. So I'm gonna mark that pre-market high, pre-market low, prior day high and prior day low. And then I wanna see if it sets up an upside opening range break or some sort of bull flag to trade around. Now, obviously this does not have to go higher. I just prefer to focus on the long side after a really big move to the upside because shorting strong stocks can be really tough, but there have been plenty of times in the current market where even after a big move to the upside, it kind of follows through to the downside after where it forms some sort of downside opening range break or a bear flag. Occasionally I will take those trades, but I really am trying to focus on the short-term trend and being that that's up, I wanna wait for that possible upside opening range break or a bull flag to form. So now let's break it down on a five minute chart. This is with the post and the pre-market data on. So it opened up kind of weak, but still realizing that that prior day, it caught a lot of momentum. I don't wanna fight that. Now let's mark the levels like I normally do. Prior day high and then pre-market high, both being green lines, just realizing that those are technical levels to the upside, bullish. And then of course, just in case if this sells off, I wanna know where pre-market low is, and that's gonna be the red line. And now to break this down on the two minute, because that's the time frame that I trade on. So what happened off the open? It quickly went to pre-market low, barely broke below it, and then got right back above it. So if anybody shorted pretty quickly for the pre-market low break, you gotta think that maybe shorts are stuck. And then has a move over the highs, pulls back, very all over the place. So I've noticed that these opening range breaks they work best after about 10 to 15 minutes, not so quick off the open, letting a handful of head fakes go by before it eventually chooses a direction. And that's exactly what happens. So moves lower off the open, then moves higher, then back towards the lows, but it makes a higher low, and then eventually gets back above the VWAP and the 9 EMA. So it clearly has that low set. It has the high set with a technical level above pre-market high. 
and knowing that it caught momentum the prior day, so just wanting to go with the trend, so I'm gonna be focused to the long side, that's what I try to do. And then if it takes out that high day and it gets through pre-market high, this should have follow through to the upside. Now, obviously nothing is 100%, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to anticipate that high day break just a little bit. I wanna see it get above that high day, clear pre-market high, and then really start to speed up to the upside. And just like all my other trades, when this thing starts to go in my favor pretty quickly, I'm gonna take quick profits. I'm not holding this for a long-term thing. I'm just scalping it, like always. So eventually this ends up clearing that high, clears the pre-market high, and look at this really big momentum move after. It goes straight up almost five points. Now this setup obviously worked really great. That's a big move. You can make a lot of money being involved in that, but I've noticed in the current market environment, there's not a ton of these setups, but being that GME caught a lot of momentum that prior day, I feel like this is why it worked out today. So that was a really good example of an upside opening range break that happened on GME. Appreciate you watching the video. Hopefully you got some value. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I just wanna talk about a couple cool things that I have to offer. The first is gonna be my newsletter watch list. This is exactly what I post on my private Twitter 30 minutes before market open every single day. I do a quick analysis of the overall market, the spy and the cues, if there's any major market news that day, and then all the stocks I'm interested in watching, it's usually four or five, if there's any major news tied to them, and all the levels that I think are in play. To the left, this is exactly what I'm posting on my private Twitter. I make sure to add that newsletter. I take a screenshot of the charts, green line to the upside being long, red line to the downside being short, and I make sure to highlight those two levels above. This is everything that's going on in my mind and my game plan going into each market open. Also, I make sure to add a little mental note because every day is slightly different, and here's an example of that. And if you want something that's a little bit less of a commitment, I do offer a live one-on-one -on -one call for one hour. This is where you can ask me questions about my journey, go over setups specifically, everything that I've gone through as a trader, whether you're beginner or advanced, this is a great way to connect with me. So if you're interested in my private Twitter or the one-on-one -on -one live call, feel free to go to callmattdiamond.com or check out the links in the description below.